Omnimo no Rayanaya, welcome back. Today we are reading chapters 53 and 54 of the Ramayana. Chapter 53 is called Sabala and Viswamitra. O destroyer of enemies, great Rama, once these words were spoken by Vashista to Sabala, the wish-fulfilling cow made all arrangements to fulfill the desires of each and every one as per their desire. Sugar cane, honey, puffed rice in good containers, invigorating drinks, excellent syrups, and different kinds of food were made available. Hot rice heaped similar to mountains, savory foods, pulses and rivers of milk and curds, various types of juices, food items with six different tastes filled in containers, and preparations made of jaggery were distributed in the thousands. O oh, Rama, all the members of the army of Viswamitra were completely satisfied and highly pleased, and the place was filled with well-fed and happy people. Then the royal sage Viswamitra, the royal priests, lady family members, were also satisfied and pleased by the food. Having been honored along with his ministers, counselors, and attendants, Viswamitra was filled with delight and spoke the following words to Vashista. O oh, Brahmin, you are worthy of being worshipped. I have been received with warmth and respect. I feel honored. O oh, expert in speech, please listen to my following words. Please give Sabla to me, and I would give you a hundred thousand cows. O oh, godlike sage, this Sabla is like a precious gem and the king of all my gems. Sabla really belongs to me. Brahma, following Dharma, please give her to me. That godlike sage, the soul of Dharma, an eminent among sages, after sage Viswamitra addressed him like this, replied as follows to the king. O oh, King Viswamitra, I will not give you Sabla, even if you give me a hundred thousand cows, or even a hundred cores of cows, or heaps of silver. Viswamitra, it is not proper to take away this cow from my proximity, as the relation between me and Sabla is like the relation between a man of Dharma and his fame. For our oblations to the gods and manes, for our necessities of living, for maintenance of fire, for sacrificial offerings to gods, and for our fire sacrifices, we are completely dependent on this cow. O king, we are dependent on this cow for our knowledge and offering in fire. She is my only possession and gives satisfaction to me at all times. O king, for these as well as other various reasons, I cannot give Sabla to you. King Viswamitra, who was an expert in conversation, hearing the words of Fashista, spoke with excitement. I shall give you fourteen thousand elephants with gold ornaments around their neck and body, further adorned with lots and lots of gold. I shall give you eight hundred golden chariots drawn by four horses, each decorated with tinkling bells. O oh, sage of great penance, I shall give you eleven thousand mighty horses of good breed, originating from good countries. I shall give you one crore of youthful cows with distinctly separated colors. So please give me Sabla. O oh, Brahmin, I shall give you as much gold or gemstones as you desire, and all that and more. So please give me Sabla. After the godly and valorous Viswamitra spoke like this, Vashistra replied, O oh, king, I will not give you Sabala. She is my jewel, she is my wealth, she is everything to me, and she is my life. O oh, king, she is needed for me for the yagnas to be conducted in the month beginnings, during the full moon, and also for several of my activities. This is the foundation of all my activities, and so there is no use in telling further useless words, as I shall never give this cow to you, which fulfills all desires. Thus ends chapter 53. Chapter 54 is called Viswamitra and Sabala. O oh, Rama, when Viswamitra did not give him the wish-giving cow, Viswamitra started pulling her. When Sabla was being dragged away by the great king, she became sad, wept, and started thinking, I am being carried away in this pitiful manner by the servants of the king, and am greatly distressed. Have I been abandoned by the great Vashista? What harm have I done to the great sage, who is a pure soul, so that he forsakes me, who am innocent, likable, and a follower of Dharma? Rama, thinking like this, sighing often, she got free from the hundreds of servants of Viswamitra and with a speed of wind rushed towards the feet of sage Vashista. 
that weeping and sad Sabla stood in front of Vashista and roared like thunder and a drum. O oh, son of Brahman, O oh, godlike sage, have I been given up by you? May I know for what reason the attendants of the king are dragging me away from your great presence? At dress like this, the Brahmin sang toned her, who was like a sister, with a heart full of sorrow. O oh, Sabla, I am not forsaking you. No harm has been done to you. The powerful one is taking you by force from me. My power is not equal to him. As of today, he is a king, a great warrior, as well as the lord of this earth. His power is mighty, as he is one of the Akshuhini of soldiers, with several horses yoked to the chariot, and is surrounded by elephants and banners. Hearing the words of Vashista with humility, Sabla, who was an expert in the usage of words, replied to the Brahmin Rishi with matchless power. O oh, Brahmin, it is believed that the strength of a Kshatriya is not countable before a Brahmin of great strength, for his strength is God-given and greater. Your strength is matchless, and the great warrior Viswamithra's strength is not greater than yours, and it can never reach your strength. O oh, greatly fortunate one, since I possess your Brahmanic power, give me orders, and I would destroy the pride of this wicked-minded one. When told like this, that one with great fame said, Create an army which is capable of tormenting this powerful enemy. Having heard his order, that wish-giving how created an army. A sound humba from her brought into existence hundreds of paplavas who destroyed the entire army of Viswamitra when he was helplessly looking. Then the enraged king Viswamitra, seeing his army destroyed, suddenly became very, very angry, with eyes widened by anger, and got into his chariot, and with various weapons, destroyed the Paplavas. When hundreds of Paplavas were troubled by Viswamitra, once again, with her anger, Sabla created Yavanasas, as well as Sakas. The Yavanas, with Sakas, possessing the great splendor and great valor and resembling the filaments of gold, crowded that place, armed with long swords, lances, dressed in gold-colored cloth and shining like a flame of fire, they destroyed the entire army of Viswamitra. Then King Viswamitra, who had great luster, released several arrows, and those weapons scattered the Yavanas, Sakas, and Paplavas. Thus ends chapter 54. Here we have an incredibly different side to sage Viswamitra. This sage, who I've probably been reading as a little bit cranky for most of this, was a king who was pretty demanding and maybe a little intolerant and uh, wanted something that really maybe wasn't his to have. Obviously, we know that this doesn't end like this and he doesn't die or anything, uh, as we'll see in the upcoming stories of the uh, personal conversion of Viswamitra. So, yeah, thoughts, comments, and all of that down below, and thank you for joining me, and until next time, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.